Good morning. I am starting off this morning uh, quite a bit later than I did yesterday morning. I've emptied the storage in the phone that I'm filming on, so it shouldn't cut out before I begin to apply the watercolor. And I thought that I would begin with a comparison of flexible nib pens. I talked yesterday about how this one, the Osprey, was pretty scratchy. This is a really inexpensive flexible nib pen. Um, don't remember how much it was, but it's the least expensive of, of these three choices. Um, this has, let's see if I can get it up closer. This has a G nib and a, a G nib is cut out. It's really a nib that's meant for a dip pen, one where you just stick the point in and not for an automatic feed like this where you have a reservoir of ink inside. Here we have the ink inside, which looks like I should fill this before I continue. So I will go and do that. All right, I'm back. This is, and I discovered, I, I Googled this to see what it was. This is the Osprey standard fountain pen with the G nib, and this is a $30 pen. And you can use it with a refill. Um, no, I'm wrong. Can't use it with the refill. This comes just with this uh, filling cartridge, and I will show you how you fill it. This is a vial of diamine chocolate brown ink. I think that's what's in here. I'm not sure, but it's okay. This piece at the bottom turns. See how it Okay. See how it's going up? And it's pushing air. You can see that uh, this is not I don't do it in this direction when I'm actually filling it, but I'm I'm trying to share with you how these work. So this is going up, pushing the air out. So you want to do this over a sink and this direction so that it pushes it out this way. Or if you're on a plane or something, you would hold it right over your vial so that anything coming out of the nib will go back into the vial and not all over yourself. Now submerge this all the way into the ink. Make sure that there's room and you don't, you know, see how the level is going up. And you don't have to put it all the way in, but I usually do to make sure that I really get the ink in there and then I wipe it off. And what you do is you slowly, because you've created a vacuum, you slowly bring that stopper back up by turning it clockwise. Can you see the level of the ink coming up? All the way up to the top, slowly, because it's sucking it up, so give it time to suck up. And then often you just release it a little bit and then back up and that gets it flowing better. Then you really want to make sure to clean, wipe this off with a paper towel or something so that you don't ink up your fingers completely. Okay, I made that look far more complicated than it really is. So this is the Osprey, and I find it's hard to get it started, see? There we go. And this is what I mean by railroading. I'll zoom in on this. When you press hard, the tines open up. Sometimes you have to dip it into water. With a better pen, you don't have to do that as much. Here, if I hold it up straight, it works better. But see how it's, it's a little bit hard to describe. It's a stiff pen, but it's stiff nib, but the tines do split open. So if you hold it up straighter, I have a tendency to hold things more at an angle like that. 
but when I'm trying to make a thick thin line see it see how they split now if you work very slowly there see that's what you want but I just don't move that slowly maybe if I really did calligraphy which I can't say that I do it's frustrating so don't like this scratchy noise see? and it's kind of fun to draw with when I don't really care because sometimes it works well and sometimes it doesn't. So it adds a great deal of variety to a drawing, but it's pretty uncontrolled variety, which I also enjoy. So that's the Osprey, the $30 pen, and that's what you get is a $30 pen. All right, moving on, let's test this out. Now, all of the flexible nib pens are a little tricky. This is a vintage Mont Blanc that's hard to come by. And this is a dream come true. Smooth. Look at that. Now there's some railroading too, but I was really putting pressure on it. Look at that. Not only do you get variation of line, but you get light to dark, and it's just, you know, depending on the ink. Look at that. And it just, oh my gosh, it's like, it's like a springboard. It, it just, oh, oh. it is fabulous. But it's also a pricey pen. And it's not something that I usually travel with because I don't dare risk losing it. It's not like I could go out and buy another one. It took me years to find this one. Okay, now this other one. This is my Aurora. It's also a pricey pen. And this is an incredibly flexible pen. Not like the Mont Blanc. This ha you have to work at more. Uh, let's see if it's working. It can make a really fat line, even fatter than that. I have not yet been able to coax it into that. This is one that I really journal a lot with, just writing. It's fun to write with. Um, if I hold it at the right angle, it doesn't railroad. Can you see it? Okay, see, oops, there it's railroading again, where the ink stops flowing in that space between the split tines and just goes down the tine. And this is so much stiffer, but I know because I saw at Fountain Pen Hospital, I saw someone use this pen, this pen, and make really fat lines. It's just, I have not tamed it, but it is smooth, it's not scratchy, gives me variety of lines. See that? I can work pretty fast and then, and it doesn't make that horrible scritchy scratchy noise. It also starts right up. So there are a lot of things that I love about this. It's not quite this. Nothing has compared to this pen. Okay, so I, I really could go on all day about fountain pens and I won't do that. This, uh, um, the Aurora, comes out with a new color every year. I don't remember what year I got this. It was not that many years ago. And that color was brown. Probably wouldn't have picked brown, but but um, that's the color of the year and, and that's what I got. All right, back to the morning scribble. That's your little lesson in fountain pens and railroading. I'm gonna go back to see what's possible with the Osprey because I did have, I just couldn't have cared less 
yesterday morning. It was four in the morning, 4.30 in the morning. Didn't matter to me what happened. And I wasn't trying too hard, I was just playing. And that attitude carried over into the watercolor that was clearly, to me, influenced by Vuillard at the time, though I didn't really realize it. Um, let's see, are you seeing that? Yeah. Okay, so here we go with today's. I'm working on the cupboard to the left of the one that I played with yesterday, and we'll see what happens.